for me to see this shift in you, you have always been this like very bright, infectious personality. Like you're the person people want to like gravitate to, to hang out with. Wow. And you've always been that. And now to see this version of you, that's just like this clarity that you have. That's like, oh my God, I feel like I can like see your third eye happening like <laughs> before me, like teach me your ways. How did you... Like, what was the process of going through those things and revisiting, I guess, some of the trauma that comes with being catapulted into mm. the position that you were in, in dealing with some of the body issues that you were dealing with, and just those struggles of the highs and lows to where you are now to fully understand and concept all those things that you went through? Wow, that was a phenomenal uh <laughs> way of putting that. That was like brilliant. I feel like, and thank you so much for saying that. Like, I, I, th it's like, I feel like I can receive that. And like, I, you know, I have so much like love and respect for you. So it's like hard to fully receive that, but it, it I, I do because like, I understand what that means now to like, to say, man, like, thank you because I have worked so hard on these things. I have truly, yeah, truly I like, it. <laughs> I can just I, like hear it in the way that you're talking. And it's like, it's in like, it, you just have such an understanding. So like, what was wow, the work yeah. into getting into that understanding of all of these things? So first of all, you said it in, 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 in the first part of going into the, this question, you said like, when you get catapulted into something like fame or, or something like, you know, ex extremely high pressure, you do, you have that expectation of yourself. I should be here. I should have, I should have this shit together. I should, I should have this understanding. I should, I should, 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 I should be these things just because I now have this different level of status or this dif different level of like fame. I all of a sudden have this responsibility to be all these things because I have all this attention on me. I have this influence. I have this power and I don't know how to use it. Uh, and it's like, who should I be? Who, who, who can I be? How, how do I live up to this position, this role? And, and I think, this, this happens to everybody. You said it, it is the human experience. It is the absolute human experience, but it's like on a level of being, being at the height of something, being on television, uh, being a, a, a very, a select few in an industry that people work their whole lives to get to, right? Like it's so prestigious and, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, one second. It's so prestigious. And, and so it's like, I can't fuck up. I, I, who would I tell? Like people wouldn't understand that. And then you start to, you start to diminish your problems. Well, this isn't that big of a deal. Like I didn't have that hard of a childhood. I look at all the things I have now, look at, I, I have money. Now I have uh, relevancy. I have, uh, attention, re you know, power. And, and, and so it's like, maybe my problems aren't that bad. So then we, it's for me, it's like, I, I continue to suppress, continue to deny all the things that were literally like every, like wrestling, my time in WWE, it would be easy to say, oh, f me up. However, I now realize, and, and I, I thought that for a long time, because I, I, and that's why I couldn't, I didn't do anything in wrestling for a really long time until like the May Young. And that's why that was such a big deal to me because like, I literally didn't know how to process it. Anytime I would do like an appearance or like a signing or talk about wrestling, I would have these feelings uh, that I didn't know how to process and, and I didn't know how to not have them essentially. Mm -hmm. And so like, I, uh, now I know that everything that was shown to me, everything. So everything I look at in wrestling, the, the painful shit, the, the things that I, I went through and was struggling with, like during my time there, also the really like profoundly beautiful things, all the opportunities, the travel, the, the connections, the, the love available to me from fans and, and, you know, my peers and, and every, the, the, the deep connections that are made, like all of it, um, all of it showed me and reflected to me th things that already existed in me, pain that already existed in me. Um, and so uh, if you can truly look at your life, at, like everything in your life, every aspect, like your job, like whatever your career, every, everything that, that has to do with like your profession and then your, your family, your relationships, and then your body and your health, you look at everything, it reflects to you what you have going on within yourself. And it's like, if you can say, oh my gosh, like, Oh, I don't understand myself. I, I want to understand 
why I am the way that I am. I want to understand how to like shift my perspective. I'm going to understand how to like change habits. I want to understand how to not feel the way that I feel when I, when I come into contact or think about, or talk about wrestling, you know, like this pain that I have, like, and so it took this, um, I, I just didn't know where to start. And most of us, most of us never were taught any, any form of communication that is safe. Like with our, our parents are the first people that we learn everything from or or whoever our caregivers are. And if our parents or our caregivers aren't, uh, mature emotionally and understand communication and, and the safety required, uh, to teach someone what that is, a child, um, you end up with the same, uh, shortcomings or the same traumas and pains that your parents have. And it's like, just, you inherit all of that shit. You absorb it. And it sucks because it's like, then you become so torn and you're like, "I, I love my parents so much. They're my parents. And like, they indirectly taught me these things. Some of it's direct, but so it's like that whole relationship to try to understand, sort, process, forgive, find clarity on. And then it's also the deeper level of that is like the self, the conflict within yourself, the conflict of like, I feel like I'm this, but I have to be this. And so like, and then you're stuck in this in between. So you're just always in conflict. So your body is always in conflict with itself, your emotional body, your mental body, your energetic body, like your physical body, every, everything. It's all, like, there's so much conflict because we want to be who we are. We want to understand what that means. Cause it's a feeling it's not intellectual. It's not something that can be explained, uh, mm-hmm. but we don't know how to do that. We don't feel allowed to do that. We don't feel safe to do that. We don't even know where to start to even get to, to like the core of who we are. Um, and like, I, it, it was like almost mounting for me. I left wrestling. I got married right away. I had like a really like brutally, um, di- toxic marriage and divorce. And then, um, you know, this whole process I was uh, dr- drinking, I, I was numbing myself. So t- towards the kind of like the apex of, of all of it before I, I, really understood that I needed to make a huge change in my life. Mm-hmm. I was numbing myself every single day. So I was like functioning, but I was like, it was just, it was like the most, uh, blatant form of surviving, just surviving. Now, what was that, like, what was that experience like for you? I mean, I was so on the outside of any of these things, but like knowing like, Hey, Celeste is going through X, Y, and Z, uh-huh. seeing that you got married, seeing, uh, that dissolve to having you know, being in a a business relationship with your ex-husband as well. I mean, God, that must've taken such a toll on you. Oh my God, dude. Think, think about it though. Like if everything's a reflection of your internal world, your internal life, I left wrestling. I I left wrestling because I was like, I thought I was just going to get fired. I felt like less and less relevant. I was, I, I had, so much like shame. I had gained all this weight and like my body was just giving me every signal that I was not okay. Like emotionally, like mentally, I just, I, I, I had so much like hatred for myself. I had so much resentment for myself. And like, then that projected outwards towards others. And like, it just, I, I, I was like in self-destruct mode. And so I just asked for my release on a day that like, it was like a really shitty day. Oh, I remember it so specifically. We were in Philadelphia. <laughs> Every time I would be in that building, I would think of that moment uh, in the locker room. God. All the time. I know it's so crazy. I, I was like, I was so disassociated from like so much of that day because it was so painful. Cause like, I didn't understand why I was doing these things. I just was like, I don't know what to do. And like, I, I, like I, for a long time hated the way I left. Cause like, I like just ripped myself out of like really the only like love and support I had, like really in my life. And, but I, I didn't know how to receive any of it. Like I was isolating myself. I was like, I didn't, I, so I'm like, okay, well, this is the, you know, maybe this is time for me to leave. And I had gotten engaged really fast and I was like, all right, well, let me just, I felt like I just needed to go on like a hiatus and just figure my shit out. Cause I felt like I had never had a chance in my life to just like, cause I, you know, I was working from a very, very young age to like contribute to 
the, our income as a family and just constant, it's just a constant struggle. And so I, that became burned into my operating system. It became, uh, imprinted into my nervous system to just be so like on edge all the time. So afraid that like the, the floor is going to get ripped out from underneath me. So like, Oh, always looking over my shoulder. Cause I, I didn't know how to trust any, I didn't know how to trust life. Like I didn't know how to trust anyone. I had never had a relationship in my life from the time I was born that I, where it was safe to just trust, to just have trust. And so I didn't know how to do that. And so I was like, well, I feel like I don't have really any other options. So I, you know, I left and I got like a couple months severance and I didn't really have a plan on what I was going to do. I, I literally felt like I don't have any thing to give, to share. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what my career, I felt so lost. And so like, I just got married and I was like, well, I'll start a business. And I was like, maybe I can do that. I don't know anything about business. I don't know anything about clothing manufacturing and stuff, but I, to me, and I can see this now to me, it was just replacing wrestling and wrestling was replacing fitness and competing. So like when my only relevance I felt growing up, like in my teen years, especially I, I started to find my identity in being really muscular and strong. And so I started working out a lot and I competed as soon as I got out of high school and that became my identity. I was like, this is the way that I'm going to get love and respect and, and, and be something in the world is through this, this is the vessel. And so when mm -hmm. I, when I started doing that, I had some success. And then immediately after the first couple of shows I did, I started having like really f up like body dysmorphia and, and didn't, I didn't understand nutrition. I didn't understand how to take that care sure of myself. That's a popular topic on this podcast lately where the body dysmorphia shit is gnarly. Everybody, every <laughs> body and literally and and so i it became very toxic and unhealthy like in in like the fitness industry or my, my competing days but i still was like this is my meal ticket this is my bread and butter this, i don't know what what the f else i would do with my life i i had i thought so little of myself i thought so little i thought so little of myself it's no respect for myself and it's that, just like, every kills me to hear oh my gosh isn't it crazy though like yeah. I, I think it's like why I love connecting to fans so much now when I do like signings and stuff. Cause I'm like, just so you know, whatever you're going through right now. Cause like a lot of times people come up and they're so nervous and they're just like, like a wreck. And I'm like, just so you know, like whatever you're feeling like is so okay. Like I feel those things all the time and I'm kind of feeling it right now too. And, but when I was on TV, like I felt like this every day. And so it's like, just so you know, we're all the same. And it's like, it's so cool. Cause like that really gives people this ability to be like, okay. Oh yeah. yeah. It's so crazy. So like, I just, I, when I found wrestling, no, well, I wasn't having any success anymore in the fitness industry, but I was still trying to make it work. Cause I didn't know what else to do with myself. Kind of going to college a little bit half ass, uh, what maybe I'll get an associate's degree and whatever. And then I had the opportunity to, to try out for WWE. I, you know, we, we all know how that went. And I, I wrestling became my new vessel. Like, this is how I'm going to get this is who, how I'm going to be someone. This is yeah. my, this is the only way, this is it. This is my opportunity. So I grasped it so tightly. Like this has to work for me. This is my way to be someone in my life. This is it. And so that's why, like when it didn't turn out to be that for me, I think like, I just started falling apart and like being like, why can't I figure this out? Yeah. And then when I left start after, you know, I got married and I started my business that was my new way of proving and being like, please tell me I'm good enough world. Like, please tell me I am like, I can, I, I am enough to be successful to, to uh, run a business. I'm, I'm, I'm smart enough to do that. I'm capable enough to do that. And seven years I tried seven years. I tried to do that. And I eventually towards the end of that, before Grant, before I met Grant, who's, he's my fiance now he's, he's, He's my business partner. He's, he's truly, truly been my teacher. And, and now like, it's, it's so insane to unravel, like the process of, um, the stages of like awakening I went through throughout our, our relationship leading up to now. But when I, when I met him, I had just left. Um, I had just come out of, I was like months away from coming out of, um, draw like a medical detox, uh, for drinking. And so like, I, there was a third time. So that means like, I literally could not find it in myself to look at the root problem, to look at 
why I was doing that to why I was numbing myself. I was like in this prison that I didn't know how to get out of. And I didn't even know that I had built myself into it. And so I like my only escape was like drinking. Cause like I are drugs, like, cause I literally did not know how to not feel the pain that I felt uh, on a, a daily basis. And, and it was like, I was, my body was like really unhealthy. And I just, it was so bad. I was like, I would like close the blinds in my house, like on sunny days. Like it was very, I was like a creature. It was like very strange. 